Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. And uh, today we are heading out to Allegheny National Forest. Hey guys, I am here at Allegheny National Forest. Uh, I got here to the uh, Willow Bay Campground at Allegheny National Forest. Toby's been like kind of chilling out here. I dropped him off first with a bowl of water. Um, thankfully, I brought um, this wagon. So I've been loading that up and it's, uh, it's really the only way I've been able to make it possible to get my stuff down here. I haven't really even gotten a chance to look at this place yet. I mean, it's nice, it's right by the water. Well guys, the tent is set up and looks like it's gonna rain soon. I think I might have heard some thunder. This is, uh, look, a little bit stressful to set up, a little bit stressful to get here, but man, it's a nice view right on the water here. So this is Willow Bay, which is a little offshoot of this reservoir in Allegheny National Forest. Um, there's a lot of families here obviously I'm hearing a lot of kids screaming um, music playing so it's not the most peaceful place I'll be honest but um, it's very nice so far so this has definitely been a different kind of setup I'm right by water this is the first time I think I've ever camped right next to water it's uh, it's kind of interesting uh oh hold on See, Toby's got himself tangled with the rope. Now he can't reach his water bowl. Uh, let me go fix that. This place is uh, National Forest land. The first time I've ever been inside the National Forest that I know of, I've camped at the state park that's close to here. Well, south of here, Cook Forest, which was beautiful. So I've been anxious to check this place out. Honestly, it's a little overwhelming. There's so many places. The National Forest is so big and I don't know really where the worthwhile places are to check out. I'm not honestly sure how much I'm gonna do this time, this trip, like as far as hiking or exploring, I really don't know. There's like a dozen campgrounds, all these trails, all these backpacking trails, places to do water stuff. And I've really never known where to start. So this is me just kind of trying something. It's a campground, but I think it's just very pretty here. It'd be nice, I think, to have a, maybe a boat or kayak where you could go explore the water. I have a kayak. I just don't know how to have Toby here and have a kayak by myself. I ended up going and getting this gazebo. I could already tell it was going to be annoying with the bugs. They kept falling right on the picnic table, these uh, caterpillars. Um, so I'd rather them be outside than inside. Uh, also, I, with it thundering, I figured um, it was worth an extra trip up to the truck to get this because this really gives you your only place to be out of the rain, at least a little bit, in the, the center of it. Um, other, other than sitting in the tent, which when it's hot out, you don't want to just sit in the tent all day. Okay, I just found out I need to be like super careful walking along the water because I don't know if you can see them. But there are these tiny, teeny, tiny little frogs. Where's, like, there's one. They're so tiny. And they're all over. Like the whole ground is moving over here with these little baby frogs. I don't know if they're babies or they don't get any bigger than this. I've never seen frogs this small. I hope you're able to see them. They're just all over and they're so little. I 
I have been going out into the water a little bit. It's kind of chilly, but it's not terrible. Once you're in, like your body starts getting used to it. Bunch of people swimming down there. These people have their boat tied off right next to the camp. I just have Toby wondering how to get down here. He doesn't really like the water too much. I might try to get him in a little bit, but he's not a big swimmer. Uh-oh, did you get hooked? Yep, probably is stuck on something. Uh-oh. There you go. So I thought I'd show you my campsite. So I'm in the deer loop and I'm on site 102. And it's all set back from the road. Um, the whole loop is away from the road. There's these little cabins. I haven't really seen them too much. Kind of looks like they're still getting put together. Some of these look like they're not ready to be used yet. So here's my site. Um, it's got like a pretty big place to set things up. And I'm kind of only using a little section of it. It's really on an angle though, so I don't know. I kind of thought that where I set up my tent over there is maybe one of the flatter sections. There's a big wide open space here. And I kind of wish I had my picnic table up here, but it's just too hard to move those by yourself. So I almost always set up the gazebo over top of the picnic table. So I've got like a place to sit that's um, a little bit out of the bugs and out of the sh in the shade. Honestly, it's kind of nice sitting by the water, being in the gazebo though, so away from some of the bugs. Toby's getting real tangled with all these trees here, but um, I really don't know a better place to tie him off. So I've just kind of been having to untangle him when he does. Every time I walk away from the camp to run up to the truck for something, he's like barking like crazy. So I started, last time I went up there, I brought him with me. He's doing good though. Aren't you, bud? You having fun camping? You having fun camping? It was getting real windy for a while, so I tied up a little guy line on my uh, canopy. Um, just to keep that one end connected to this tree, because that's kind of where it was leaning really hard. Yeah, otherwise it's uh, kind of my normal setup. Just keep the keep the picnic table under the gazebo, and all the things that can be out of the rain be in the center there. It's already getting a little dark. It's kind of cloudy, so I'm trying to make some foil packets for dinner. I got a fire going. It was really hard to make a fire because all the wood here is damp and wet. Eventually, after like letting it dry out a little while and help with my propane torch. Um, I got it going, uh, but it's not a great fire. I don't know if I can trust it to make a foil packet in. For that, you need like really good set of coals, and I'm not sure about this this wet wood how it's how it's gonna burn. So um, I may just use the stove and just forget about trying to use the, the foil packet. Basically, you just kind of have some vegetables you're cooking up. I can easily do that in a pot. I think that might be what I do just to take some of the guesswork and the stress out of trying to make this fire work. I'll use it for marshmallows or something. So. Um, I prepared everything in little baggies where everything's already chopped up. So all of my cold stuff's in small bags in this bigger bag. And that way it can all be kept together. And uh, easier if I don't use it all to have little containers to clean it or to pack it back up in. We've got carrots, we've got some diced onion, diced potatoes, and some diced green peppers. We've got some, it's basically like ground beef. More often than not, I'll try to do some meatless stuff. So this is like ground beef but it's it's from plants so normally this would be all put together in some foil and cooked over the fire for 40 minutes or something I'm just gonna use a pot and uh, close it and kind of simmer it over some cooler heat and it'll, it should come out just about the same these potatoes need to get in here first so one thing I already have put on my list to improve for next time um, and I forgot to do it. I needed this last trip too. So inside this gazebo, I don't know how, but these bugs keep getting inside. Now it's not as bad as if I didn't have it at all, but there's enough that it's still really annoying. And a lot of them are just flying around the top and everything. 
So I'm going to get one of those, uh, those little sticky fly paper things that hangs. And I think I'm going to put one of those in the middle the next time if I can find them. There's just so many things that manage to find their way under the bottom or however they get in here. Through the little opening in the door. I need them not to be in here. I There was a mosquito I found earlier. It was literally like two inches across. This thing was massive. No. So, yeah, flypaper. Like, you know, those little things that hang. I feel like I'll catch at least a bunch of them if I have one of those in here. Well, I'm going to put in some onions and green peppers next and some seasonings. So this would be kind of bland on its own. Um, I'm trying some everything bagel seasoning on this. So it's got like salt and garlic and some sesame seeds and stuff. And I think that might spice things up a little bit, give it a little bit of a seasoning. If that doesn't work, I got some hot sauce too. I forgot I actually have garlic in here. As soon as I opened it up, I got a whiff of it. And here's that ground meat it's from Gardein. Um, I've had it before. It doesn't taste exactly like beef, but it's not bad. It has like hardly any fat, if any, so I'll add a little bit more oil. Alright, this, uh, this looks really good. Um, it smells like... It smells just the same as if I would have made it on the campfire, I think. This is Sunday night and I've got some geese uh, coming to visit me. I think they're uh, expecting some food, but I'm not feeding them anything. So they're moving along. Toby put himself to bed. It's like seven o'clock now, uh, but he was, uh, he was over it. So he stuck his face through the tent and found his, his bed and he's in, in there sleeping right now. I'm gonna put a movie on uh, and uh, Made some coffee, just kind of chilling out a little bit this evening. So we'll see uh, see what happens when I get to bed. It's a little bit uh, on an angle, and I don't have my cot set up, so it's gonna be a little less comfortable than I'm used to, I think. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I wanted to show you my little fan set up. It's getting a little dark, so I'll uh, got the lamp going. Um, but the um, yeah, the jackery just plugs in to this fan, which I just clipped right to it. And I've been loving it because I can easily uh, have it out here on the picnic table. Uh, there's not a whole lot of air moving at, at some times and it just gets like really, really hot. So it's nice to have just a cool breeze blowing in your face. Um, and then I'll move this over to the tent tonight, have some air for me and Toby. Geese are back. They probably are used to getting fed by these campers. They probably just go up and down every night and just wait for stuff to get thrown out. Cause they're definitely looking at me as if like waiting for me to throw them something. Well, good morning. Um, last night it rained all night. Thunderstorm, really hard rain. Um, Toby was a little scared <laughs> from the thunder. Um, and it was just like consistent almost the whole night it was raining. So yeah, this morning everything's a little damp. Everything's kind of muggy and a little just gross from all the rain. So I'm gonna get some breakfast started. Um, my plans today are to make some banana pancakes. Got some kind of mushy brown banana, some of my pancake mix, and some cinnamon and some brown sugar. I'm gonna add an egg. I have um, like three eggs in this little container. So I got my little batter here. Next, I will start frying these up. What happened, bud? Did you get tangled? <laughs> All right, let's get you, let's get you fixed. Good buddy. Hey guys, so uh, Toby and I are, we're off on a hike. Um, the plan is to walk to New York State. It's, not, it's like a mile away, I think. Um, but we have to get to the trailhead first. 
Uh, so we're just walking through the campground here. I just noticed they've got a uh, bunch of canoes. Um, kind of wondering, kind of wondering if you can rent them out. So we made it to the trailhead for the North North Country Trail, um, and this should only really be a tiny little section of it. That will take us up to the New York state line, and then I think we'll just turn around there. It's like a logbook. All right, we'll check in. You gotta advertise the tube. <laughs> All right, bud, you ready? Let's pack this back up. Yeah, I'm just uh, thankful this little section is in the woods. We were really getting hot walking on the street, but it's way, way cooler here in the, in the forest. Yeah, all that rain kind of made everything damp but it's not terrible in here. There's a lot of leaves, um, so makes it not quite as muddy. So this North Country Trail is like a multi-day backpacking trail. Here's one of the camps. Nice little section for backpackers to set up camp in. Yeah, this whole forest and our campsite and everything is just overrun with these like caterpillar things. I'm not sure what kind they are. If they're gypsy moths or if they're something else, but they are all over like pretty much every tree. It's really gross. Well, we made it to the New York border. So this stops being Allegheny National Forest and starts being Allegheny State Park in New York. Is this another log box? Ew. More worms. Guess I'll sign into this one too. All right, now I'm in New York. Now I'm in PA. New York, PA. Toby is not amused by this game. Well. I think this is as far as we wanted to hike because we've now gone three miles. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be pretty close to that going back. So, um, yeah, we're going to just start heading back to the camp. Oh gosh, these bugs. Going back, we are downhill, but it's not even like a super steep downhill. So this should be a pretty good walk back. And then I promised Toby, basically I promised myself, that uh, maybe we'll go sit in the truck and run the AC for a few minutes. <laughs> uh, deer just ran out in front of us. It's like a big doe in the woods here. But my camera, I didn't have it on. <laughs> so um, it, it's been downpouring and I decided to drive into Bradford, which is the town closest to where I'm camping. It's been kind of nice having, uh, like sitting in the AC a little bit, get some cool air. Um, but it has been downpouring for like most of this afternoon. It's downpouring right now. I uh, I made a couple stops. I got some gas. I got some some coffee at Tim Hortons. We don't have Tim Hortons near me, so that's kind of fun. Um, but uh, right now, I'm kind of at a dilemma because uh, yeah. So I have Toby with me, of course. Um, I'm here at the Zippo Museum. I don't know if you can see it. Everything here is like a giant Zippo lighter. This is where they build Zippos, I guess. Um, and so I'm obviously not gonna try to bring Toby inside, but um, I may I may try to like walk around with the camera outside at least so you can see the, uh, see the outside of this place. It's downpouring and I'm pretty sure no dogs are allowed here and I don't really wanna walk them even around the grounds here. It's kind of a small museum, but 
It looks cool. Like even the street lights are like Zippos. But yeah, it's thundering. I mean, it is a storm. So I might just quickly walk around the outside and scope it out, but I think that's gonna be about it. I do have an umbrella here, so hopefully I can do this without getting my camera too wet. All right, guys, gonna make this quick because it is downpouring and this umbrella is pretty crappy. <laughs> this car is cool. Here's one of the street lights I was talking about. So it's Zippo and Case, like the pocket knife company. Must be the same company. So Trying to hurry through here. Considering my car is running and Toby's in it. Ford is backed by the company's world famous and unparalleled blood pressure. Here in the air, you can see that the That was super cool. I wish I would have had time to stop and look at and, and read stuff. But, you know, at least I got to uh, stop in there. I think I'll do, try to come here another time when I can actually see it. Oh, Toby, you were waiting so patiently. I left the AC running, the whole car is running. Oh my goodness. So I'm a Penn Stater, so I'm trying to well, I'm taking Toby around for a little walk. If he happens to poop on pit, um, I guess that's not a bad thing. <laughs> what is it, Toby? <laughs> See, Toby's a Penn State dog. <laughs> He's not okay with this panther. <laughs> Looks like we found a little bike path. George is crossing by Zippo. No, don't jump down there, Toby. Come on. There's like big bird nests up at the top of these rafters. There's a spillway. Yeah, I just saw this like while I was driving past on my way back to the camp. So I figured I'd stop. It's really pretty. These trees are so tall. Well, we made it back to the truck. That was a really pretty, pretty walk. 
And I had no idea that was there. So we're gonna walk down to the camp from the parking area. So here's the water, which is actually nice because it's pretty close. Well, got back to camp here after our day of adventure down in Bradford and tent still up. That's good. All right, buddy. Let's get you settled in. Hey guys, we are back at our camp and um, I'm trying to get some quick dinner put together. Um, I'm just opening up a can of opening up a can of chili and um, using some little bags of Fritos with it to make like maybe walking tacos but it's walking chili Frito pie. Really I hope I will just have one dish to clean which is the, the pot that I'm heating up the chili in. These tadpoles are bigger than the frogs. <laughs> There's a lot of them. So it's uh, it's currently just after nine, and uh, I'm in my tent. I gotta say, this has been one of the more stressful camping trips I've done. Definitely the most stressful one I've tried to video. Really, there's been two main things that are causing the stress. The one is the the weather. So it's been, um, it's been raining a lot, like downpours, and uh, it's kind of put a damper on the plans to, uh, to get a little bit more hiking in. If you ever camp in a tent, you know like how gross it can feel when everything starts getting damp and never has a chance to dry out. And that's kind of the feeling that it's been here for the last few days. But I think the thing that's maybe causing me a little bit more stress is the um the gypsy moths that are everywhere so when i was on that hike earlier you saw them all over the trees they're all over here too um they're all over the camp and uh i've been pretty much constantly having to peel them off of the tent the gazebo everything so much that i actually took down the gazebo uh, earlier tonight i took it down i Looked into every little crevice I could find to try to clean out little caterpillars that were hiding. I mean, I must have removed 50 to 100 of them. They were just everywhere. And I really don't want to bring them back. I think the problem was that I had set up that gazebo right underneath the tree. And I think that tree was just like a big source of where they were at. So um, I took the whole thing down. And it's packed up. It's cleaned up. It's uh, as good as I could get it. I also moved my tent so it's further away from the trees. I also went around the edge of the outside of my um, my tent and uh, sprayed some, some bug repellent. So I have no idea if that will do anything for these moths, but they like to climb up from the bottom um, as well as climbing or falling from the top. So I'm hopeful that maybe if I have a perimeter uh, of DEET around the outside of the tent, maybe it will make a difference. But I will say, today was pretty interesting. You know, despite all the bugs, despite the rain, we went on a pretty cool hike all the way, you know, from this camp up to uh, the New York state line. That was cool. We went over to Bradford. I got some gas. That was the main thing. It was downpouring, so I wanted to be away from the tent and um, got in the truck, put the air conditioner on. That was pretty great. Got gas, got some coffee. Um, I walked around real quickly in that museum. Um, it was a shame I couldn't spend more time there, but I didn't want to leave Toby alone in the truck for, for really long. And I probably could have spent an hour or two in there. There was a lot of cool stuff to see, just old historical lighters and knives. And I like that stuff. So uh, maybe next time I'm up here, um, if I can get a babysitter for Toby. And then that, uh, that reservoir that I just kind of stopped by, that was like one of the most beautiful things I saw this trip. Um, it was such a nice, nice little walk around there, those bridges and the trees. So I'm thankful I got to see that. Uh, and then I found out that if I walk all the way to the uh, where the boat launch is at this campground, 
I got one bar of service on my phone. Um, so, like, I think my sister and my mom kind of, like, got worried because I didn't respond to anything the last couple days. Um, so, it sounds like they actually called the, like, office here to make sure I checked in. Ugh. Yes, I checked in. There's no signal. We're in the middle of the freaking national forest. You ever look at the, uh, look at a map of this place? It's just like trees everywhere. There's hardly even any farms or houses. It's just trees. So it doesn't surprise me there's very little signal out here. Yeah, it's not like the park rangers came and found me or anything. They just told them I checked in. So they were, they were fine after that. I think we're just going to put on some a movie or something on my tablet and uh, try to get to bed a little early tonight we had a lot we had a lot of walking today so I think me and Toby are gonna need to need to get some sleep so I'll catch you guys in the morning okay Toby so uh, I can't tell if it's easy to tell on the camera, but we're getting some major gusts of wind and shaking the whole tent. Uh, Toby's getting a little nervous from it. I like, I think it's like uh, giving us a nice cool breeze in here for once, but uh, definitely gets a little noisy when the whole tent starts shaking. So, we'll see how, see if this dies down or, or if we're going to be done with this all night. Well, uh, good morning guys. Um, wow. That was a rough night. It was incredibly windy. Uh, the, uh, the tent was like blasting around almost the whole night. You'd try to almost get to sleep and then a big gust would come and just shake the whole thing and wake you up. So it was rough. I know it was keeping Toby up, keeping me up too. Uh, but it, it didn't really rain. So um, stuff's not like extra wet this morning. Um, I'd packed up a lot of stuff last night so this morning um, there's not too much left to do although I did put away my actual stove um, so I'm just using a camp stove to make some coffee and then I'm gonna cook some eggs on it um, see so yeah, I'm not sure exactly what we're gonna do today it kind of depends how the weather holds up um, there's a few stops I'd like to try to make on the way um, back home yeah we'll see if that happens Some egg sandwiches um, they're not so easy to cook when you're using the um, using the jet boil with a little pot attachment um, versus like the full big stove the Coleman stove like the Coleman stove obviously you can it's a little bigger width of the flame so it's a little easier to cook something on the whole pan but um, it worked got my eggs cooked and uh, just gonna eat some breakfast here and then uh, finish up packing Well guys, I think we're all packed up here. Just got one more one more load of stuff to bring back to the truck. So uh, we might uh, try to make a couple stops on the way back. I uh, haven't decided yet, but we'll decide on the way. Kinswood Bridge State Park. So the visitor center is here. Maybe I'll put Toby in the truck here in a little bit so I can go in that. Looks like we can get over to this skywalk. Come on, Toby. Whoa. That's cool.
here at the Kinzua Bridge. This is the Skywalk. And you can see behind me where the uh, the rest of this train bridge got knocked down by a tornado. We're really high up and it's pretty cool. Uh, they actually have like a glass bottom floor where you can walk right out. Toby's not too, uh, too thrilled by it. It's pretty cool up here though. And uh, it's not super busy, there's not too many people. But look at this view. So there's some trails down there. I think we might have to check some out while we're here. Super cool. Kinsua Creek Trail. thing is just massive. All right, so I'm at the Elk Country Visitor Center. I had to leave Co Toby in the truck because they don't allow animals. I guess they'll scare away the elk that you can see. Just left the visitor center. I went and checked on Toby, made sure he had some water and the windows. I cranked them down a little bit more. Um, it's not hot out though. Uh, he'll he'll be okay for a few minutes. So this looks to be just like I don't know. I guess a trail where I'll be able to get to some viewing areas. I don't know if I'll be able to see elk today or not. We'll find out. No elk. Well, I'm walking on another one of these paths with some like elk viewing stations. The last one was a, a bust. We'll see if there's any at this one. Mm, nothing. I wonder like if there's a certain time of day that's like the best time to watch meat out in the fields. Maybe like right before sundown or something. I don't see any elk. What's the end of this trail? 
I had no luck at the elk visitor center. There was no elk anywhere, um, except for the stuffed ones inside. Um, but yeah, uh, we're uh, on our way home now. Uh, we're, we're almost there actually. Yeah, this was a, overall, I think it was a pretty fun trip. I, um, you know, we made the best of the bad weather some days. We got to see quite a, quite a fair number of things and it was really pretty out there. Some of the spots we saw were really nice. So overall, I'm pretty happy. So uh, yeah, I want to thank you guys for watching and uh, tune in next time.